Hello, my name is Rico Tyler and I'm with the National STEM Scholars Program, sharing with you tools to help you expand your ability to teach phenomena-based science, use sense-making, and claim evidence reasoning in your classroom. Today, I wanna to talk about observation and measurement. Observation and measurement are central to the teaching of science. Teaching and observation, teaching measurement requires tools and resources, and not always resources and tools that are available to you. And the ability of students to go beyond the classroom depends upon having those tools available where students can go and use them. For example, I have with me right now a microscope, and there are countless ways that this microscope can be used as a tool to make observations, do activities, and to teach science but microscopes like this can be very expensive and fragile. It's not the kind of tool that you would usually take into the field. It's not the kind of tool that students can take home. What I want to do today is to show you a simple way that you can actually have your own students build a microscope and use that microscope to go into the field. In fact, this microscope is so inexpensive, so easy to build, that students can simply keep it you can build one of these for less than the consumables for most experiments. Now, this, to do this requires a smartphone. <clears throat> it can be an Android phone. It can be an iPhone. It can even be a tablet. But you use this with the tablet or phone to make the microscope do what it's going to do. The next thing you're going to need is a convex lens. Now, this is where you have to do a little bit of hunting you need a convex lens that has a focal length of anywhere, and this is not very exact, but anywhere between about 5 and 25 millimeters. You can buy these in surplus outfits, and this is what we're going to use today. This is actually a convex lens out of a laser pointer, literally a two or three dollar cat toy kind of laser pointer. Now, you can buy one and literally smash it open and pop the lens out. These particular lenses come, uh, I have a source for these, and in our supplementary materials you can get that source, where you can buy a pack of 10 of these for $10. So this microscope is going to cost you and your students a little over a dollar to make. Now besides that, you're going to need some foam rubber. Now this is exactly the kind of foam rubber that you would pick up in a craft store, in a department store, Color really doesn't matter. You can make these in your school colors. I like to make one piece white, and you'll see in a moment why I like to do that. But what you're going to do is cut three pieces of this foam rubber. Now here you see red and white, but it could be any colors. Now the particular shape, this is, this is a one inch square with some rounded corners on it. You can cut this yourself. Uh, what I actually like to do is to cut these with a Cricut. Now, if you're familiar with the Cricut, you would know this would be a very easy uh, thing for a Cricut to do. You could make hundreds, literally, of these little templates. And in our supplementary materials, we have a link that will take you to a file where you can cut this. But all this really is is a small square, and that square has a hole. Now, that hole needs to be just a little bit smaller than the lens that you're using so that that lens kind of sticks in there by friction. Now, once again, you have to kind of experiment with that. If you're using a Cricut, our Cricut template simply is programmed to cut a hole that matches this particular lens. If you're using your own lens or you don't have a Cricut, I recommend that you use a leather punch. You can pick up a set of these. This is the one that I happen to have. You have different size punches. You can pick up this set for like 10 or $11 uh, online or, in a, or in, a, in a craft store, and you can literally use it to punch the right size hole. So building it, you've cut out your pieces. You've got your lens. The only other thing you're gonna need is a glue stick. And here's how it goes together. It's not much to it. You start by taking the white piece, and I always like to have the, a white piece as part of mine, and you put some glue on it. Then you stack one of these on top, making sure, yes, you do line up the holes. 
press that to get good adhesion. And then put some more glue down. Like so. And then put this piece right here. And now you see I have made a stack of three. And why three? Because I'm making this as thick as this lens is tall. If I had a different lens, I would stack more of them and my hole would be cut to that size. Now all I have to do is take the lens, and by the way, someone will think about this, these lenses are symmetrical. They will work either way. So there's no wrong way to slide it in, but all you do is slide it in like so, and you have made a microscope and your total investment is a, just a, a tad over a dollar. This microscope is cheap enough, and as you can see, it's built quickly enough that students can simply take them with them. This is, a, this is almost a consumable item. Now, using it is very easy. There's two ways to use it. You can use it with a cell phone, or you can actually use it by yourself. The way you do that, and I'm going to show you here, let's say I want to take a look at the ball in a ballpoint pen. I take the lens, bring it close to my eye, and then I bring this close to the lens from the other side. Oh, right there it is. Now, as you can tell, just like with a microscope you're familiar with, you've got to get the object you're looking at to within less than half an inch. But right here, I've got this beautiful magnified view of the ball in a ballpoint pen. Like I said, so you don't have to have a smartphone to use it. But generally, you want the phone. For a phone, this is what you do. You turn on your phone, take care of your password, and turn on the camera, just the regular camera app. You then take a rubber band, put it around like so, and then notice I left the white side out. I like to have the white side facing out because it'll reflect a little bit of light onto whatever you're looking at and make the image just a tad bit brighter. I don't know if it makes a terribly big difference, but I kind of like to do that. And what I've done is I've lined up the lens with the, uh, the lens in my uh, microscope with the lens in the camera. Now my particular smartphone has two lenses and here it's the lower lens that, that I'm lining up with. You may have to look and see which one is live. But now, if you look over here, you can see a circle of light. And I sort of line things up until I've got a nice rounded circle. And now my smartphone is ready to use. I'm going to take my ballpoint pen and I'm going to set I'm going to hold it with both hands so I can be steady. And I'm simply going to bring down the smartphone until I see a focused image right there. And I've got a very sharp image of my ballpoint pen. In fact, I can even come in here and use the zoom feature and get an even bigger view. Since I'm using the camera function, I could press a button and take a picture of what I'm looking at. I could be videoing what I'm looking at. Very easy to do. And then, just to show you a different object, I have a penny here. Now I'd like to show you a couple of examples of some things that you can do with this. Uh, the, obvious, the most obvious use for it is, is in biology, but that's not the only place you can use it. There's all kinds of applications, and I'm going to show you some photographs that I have taken using this system. This first picture that you see is actually salt. These are tiny salt crystals. The uh, salt crystals are all characteristically perfect little cubes, sometimes smaller than the others. Uh, sugar looks different. Uh, it's interesting to look at the difference between the two. 
this is this this picture is actually the spring in the upper part of a ballpoint pen. You can see quite some detail in that. And this next picture is actually a nicer picture showing Abraham Lincoln and the Lincoln Memorial in uh, on a on a uh, penny. And you notice you can see very sharp detail here. This microscope actually works quite well. Although all things considered, the absolute favorite thing that I've ever photographed with one of these microscopes are snowflakes. Snowflakes are an incredibly easy thing to photograph using one of these microscopes. This is a snowflake I photographed last year. Here is a different one. The secret is to use a piece of black foam rubber or black cloth. I take a piece of, I use a piece of foam rubber, put it into the freezer in my home, get it nice and cold, and then on a snowy day, simply walk outside and let snowflakes fall on that black piece of foam rubber. And then I, I simply set it down and I photograph the flakes with my smartphone microscope. The black foam rubber gives me a really nice contrast. And by keeping it cold, it won't melt. And you'll take absolutely gorgeous pictures of that. I'd also like to show you one other thing. If you're doing this kind of microscopes, you can actually go a bit further with it. What I have right here is a little case. And in this case, I have an entire class set of microscopes. These are the exact same type of microscope as I just showed you how to make. They're using a different lens. This is actually a lens that I buy from a surplus store. I'll provide the link for it. They cost about $5, but they're actually quite good. And instead of using foam rubber to hold it, I've simply gone to a hardware store and bought some acrylic plastic and drilled an appropriately sized hole. So these are a little, little more complicated to make. And what I have is a permanent set. So I can keep these in my classroom, pull them out when I need to. And so these are nice, but my favorites are the portable ones. These little, almost throwaway, simple ones. They're nearly as good and they, they're take, that you take home. You do these with your students and within 24 to 48 hours, you will start getting back from your students photographs of everything from eyeballs to whiskers on their cat. Uh, these things just have a natural magnetism for kids and can be used in all kinds of experiments where otherwise you would want a regular microscope. And every student gets their own. That's the key here. Every student makes one. Every student gets to keep the one that they make. Uh, all the materials that you need to do this are, are online so that you can see the various parts that you would do with this. And on that note, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you find this useful. Thanks.